Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zang here, and I'm bringing you another Battlespot video from the VGC 14 Ladder Series. Fortunately, today's video will not be live commentated as Monday is the night where Ladder is basically shut down for Pokemon to do maintenance, but look through a couple of my battle videos, this one's pretty cool, so I wanted to give it to you guys. Anyway, before I get started, I just wanted to say a quick thank you to everyone who subscribed recently. The channel's seen a lot of growth in just the last couple of days, thanks to uh, PokeMMD and Shofu using my video for their VGC commentating auditions. If you haven't seen those already, definitely check them out both great guys really hope to see them at vgc's but yeah thanks everyone uh you know at around 9.8k subscribers right now so almost at that uh, glorious 10,000. and i know it's still not much compared to other pokey youtubers out there but uh, i really really love all of you guys it means so much to see so much support and i'm really glad to see people getting into vgc you know the main reason why i started this channel was to kind of spread how fun of a format vgc is and to get comments and uh, see people really enjoy it is truly awesome so thank you so much if you whether you've been here from the start or whether you've joined recently and i hope you stick along for the ride anyway since uh, i am about to hit 10k there are two things I wanted to do. I definitely wanted to make a special 10k subscriber video. Not sure exactly what I'm going to do for that yet, but I'll figure something out uh, in the next few days. Second thing I wanted to do was a pretty cool announcement for you guys. I am actually going to start sticking to a consistent schedule on this channel now. You know, you know for the last two months, I've kind of been doing Pokemon individual analyses here and there, uh, trying to get daily battle videos, but I've decided I want to do something more structured on this channel, which includes daily battle, uh, not daily, but uh, live commentated battle videos, post game uh, battle videos, uh, analyses of individual games. I want to go over some, you know, famous games and look at what the players did right or wrong. I also plan to incorporate live streaming, uh, probably sometime over the weekends or maybe weeknights, uh, into my schedule so you guys can battle me there. And I also want to do something where you guys can submit battle codes to me and I'll look over them and talk about, you know, the teams used. Uh, so definitely stay tuned for all of this. I'm going to be making a big announcement probably by the end of this week, along uh, with once I hit 10,000. Um, so stay tuned for both of those. But I've been talking for a while now, so let's get into the video and of course don't forget guys if you enjoy this video and enjoy the series give it a like uh, 500 likes is always a goal for these videos uh, for me to post daily content anyway finally getting into the match Today my team is going to be Aegislash, Azumarill, Mega Manectric, and Tyranitar. My opponent Mike's going to be running Amoongus, Rhythm Heat, Wigglytuff, and Kangaskhan. If you can't tell already, that is a carbon copy of Ray Rizzo, three-time world champion, now two-time regional champion, his regional team, which uh, featured Wigglytuff. Wigglytuff he didn't use very much, but in the matches he did bring, it did do a lot of work, including the top eight and the finals. So uh, you see here, Mike did bring it, so it should be an exciting ma match. So let's get right into it. So going into it, I know that I don't have a very good Amoongus uh kind of counter. I know I, I have to play safely around it, and I know it can cause me a lot of trouble. Rotom Heat is also pretty scary. So I decide Aegislash has a pretty good overall matchup against uh, this team, and Azumarill threatens the one thing that really scares it away, which is that Rotom Heat. So uh, my opponent's going to lead with Kangaskhan and Wigglytuff against my Azumarill and Aegislash. The first time I just want to kind of scout out a bit, I definitely don't want to get faked out by that Kangaskhan onto Azumarill. I also don't want him to make a play, say, Scrappy, fake out my Aegislash and Fire Blast it to do a ton of damage. So I do just go for the double protect to see whether he goes for the Mega Evolution or not, uh, protecting King Shield, of course. Kangaskhan does Mega Evolve, and he does go for the fake out onto Azumarill as Wigglytuff goes for the Fire Blast here. So I come out of the first turn pretty safely. Kangaskhan's actually going to switch out here since it can't really touch that Aegislash because it does carry substitute. So he's going to bring in Amoongus, which is a great counter to my Azumarill. Wigglytuff surprisingly goes for a Thunderbolt instead of a Fire Blast, and I'm going to be okay with that as Azumarill is going to be paralyzed here, so that's not good gonna eat my citrus berry here but getting paralyzed with Azumaro is never good especially because you have that one four chance of not attacking fortunately i am going to be fully paralyzed here as i did go for the play rough onto that wigglytuff aegislash is going to stance change here but i unfortunately did not target that Azumaro, uh that excuse me that wigglytuff because i was hoping my play rough would just connect and uh ko it so here I'm going to stance change again uh, and just go for a king shield. I want to KO that Amoongus and I'm really scared of it and I know he's probably going to want a rage powder here so I don't want my Aegislash to just fall from a fire blast since I know Aegislash is really important in this matchup. He does go for that fire blast so I'm pretty relieved when he goes for it, the rage powder and the fire blast, no way I won't be spored. Unfortunately because he did rage powder, play rough is going to hit that Amoongus with that rocky helmet but I'm fine with that, I got some free damage off that turn. Here Wigglytuff is actually going to switch out. It's a good play because Wigglytuff is important in this matchup and can actually beat most of my team. So knowing this, I stance change and I unfortunately did go for the attack onto Wigglytuff. Uh, I also thought the Amoongus would actually be faster than me, so I was fully expecting to fall asleep because Ray's Amoongus was actually built to outspeed the Aegislashes. So after that, I'm like, okay, that's really bad. 
Um, I really did not play that correctly. I was really expecting Omungus to be faster than me, as Azumarill also goes for the play rough. I was expecting the Aegislash to fall asleep this turn, so I was just trying to pick up that KO there. Not going to work out too well, as I both fall asleep and Azumarill is paralyzed, so I'm in a really bad position right now. Um, but here I'm going to switch into Tyranitar. I know Tyranitar is a great matchup against that Rotom Heat, and since I've got Ice Beam, I can hit that, uh, that... Amoongus for super effective damage too. I'm gonna protect with Azumarill, uh, hoping he just doesn't make any crazy plays and predict here. Uh, and fortunately, it works out as Amoongus goes for the Rage Powder, so I know he's trying to just pick up the KO here onto that Azumarill, and that's exactly what he does. So, great turn for me here, as I'm able to avoid any damage and bring in Tyranitar safely, so momentum shifts completely onto my side. Now, this following turn, I know he's probably going to want to switch out Amoongus to get that Regenerator, so I know if I play Rough This and Rock Slide, not only will I be able to KO the Rotom Heat, but do a ton of damage to whatever comes in. So when I see Wigglytuff, I'm really relieved, especially as Rotom Heat doesn't protect. Tyranitar is able to get this Rock Slide off, that's going to be super effective against that Rotom Heat, and surprisingly, even though I'm Timid Nature, I'm able to take it out. Of course, I am running a special Tyranitar with Timid Nature and Life Orb, but Rock Slide, as you see there, is still pretty powerful, as it does pick up the KO on Rotom Heat. Azumarill is also able to get this play Rough out, and it takes out the Wigglytuff. So, consider how poorly the last couple of turns played out for me, I'm able to bring things completely around and KO two of his Pokemon in the same turn while not losing either of mine, but I know the battle's not over yet as he brings in Kangaskhan and Amoongus. However, my Aegislash is an excellent matchup against both of these Pokemon. As long as I don't fall into Sucker Punch, Aegislash can actually basically win me the game. So here I'm not afraid to bring it back out. I really needed to KO both of my opponent's Pokemon in the previous turns uh, because Rotom Heat and the other Pokemon... Uh, Wigglytuff both had fire type attacks to hit my Aegislash, but now Aegislash can win me the game. Gonna make a good play here, my opponent, as he KOs my Azumarill, but Azumarill has done what it needed. Could have probably gone for an Aqua Jet, but was anticipating a Rage Powder. Um, really probably should have gone for that Aqua Jet, but you know, I know that at this point I feel very confident with my ability to win the game since Aegislash is in. Now, he went for the Spore until the switched in Aegislash, which obviously isn't going to do anything, and I know at this point I just have to wait for Aegislash to wake up, uh, get a substitute up, and that should basically seal the game up for me. Especially because Amoongus is slower than me, which I'm still kind of surprised about, uh, as Ray's Amoongus was specifically built to outspeed Aegislash. Manectric is going to protect here. I don't want to take any damage whatsoever. For example, power up punch. Um, and I want I know this Amoongus is probably going to protect, so I want to just overheat it the following turn. Kangaskhan does go for the predicted power up punch. Aegislash takes another turn of sleep. Perfectly fine with me, as once again I said, I know once Aegislash wakes up, I will be able to win this game. And I kind of played this game knowing that Aegislash wins the Kangaskhan Amoongus matchup, so I was so happy to see that Wigglytuff switch in because I know that basically sealed the game up for me. Here, Amoongus is going to go for a Rage Powder, trying to redirect any attacks, for example, Thunderbolt away from that Kangaskhan, but I did go for the Overheat here, so really relieved to see that. And once Amoongus is gone, I know Aegislash is basically set, because once the Substitute goes up, the, there's no way that Kangaskhan can actually effectively beat Aegislash. Aegislash, one of my favorite counters to Kangaskhan, even though Kangaskhan does have the super effective suck Sucker Punch, um, Aegislash with King Shield and Substitute, just such a good counter. He's going to go for the power-up punch here, and I think he really needs to if he wants any chance of winning. You know, his only chance really is for me to screw up and attack while in um, in, in the blade form and somehow, you know, faint by a Sucker Punch. Uh, I just went for the Flash Cannon here, knowing that his Sucker Punch wouldn't KO me regardless uh, if he targeted my Aegislash. Sandstorm is going to fall here, and I know the game is basically sealed up as long as I just keep on, you know, stance changing and substituting with my Aegislash. And if anything, this game should show you why Aegislash is such a threat. Uh, I did just go for a substitute here, since there was no need to change stances, as Sucker Punch would not hit me, um, because I did go for the substitute. Protect with Manectric, just because uh, I know there's no other play he could really do, just to make sure I stay in the best position possible. And at this point, it's just really not choking and making sure I get the guaranteed win, since I have it sealed up. I go for the King Shield here because I know I need to change forms if I don't want to get KO'd by Sucker Punch in attack form, as I am going to go for another Thunderbolt with Manectric at minus 2, but still able to do a lot to that Kangaskhan as he goes for another Power Up Punch onto my Manectric. Um, of course, he's at plus 1 right now, so he's going to get 2 more off, bringing him up to plus 3. But as he's not able to KO that Manectric, that's going to seal the game up, basically, because I will be able to just double target him in the next turn to KO him. Regardless of who he targets, the game is sealed up. But just to ensure the win, I still don't want to make any, any, uh, I don't want anything crazy going on. Really, this is kind of unnecessary at this point, but I know if I just bring Tyranitar and bring up the sand, uh, the game will be won. So the last couple of turns were just formalities, but once again, making sure nothing terrible happened as, uh, Aegislash just went for the substitute, not wanting to get hit by that Sucker Punch as Tyranitar comes in safely, and I know the game is over since he's not going to be able to take out that Aegislash.
So if this game showed you anything, it's why Aegislash is such a good Pokemon in VGC, why you really need a way to beat it. Um, if you don't have a way to beat it, you know, you better... <laughs> You're in for a tough one because Aegislash can single-handedly win you games, and you saw here basically won me a 2v1 against Kangaskhan and Amoongus, and my opponent's Kangaskhan is going to faint here from the sand, so I'm going to be able to take the 3-0 victory. Really, really great game. I think it showcased, uh, once again, swing of momentum in VGC, coming back when the first couple turns don't go out too well. Uh, you know, when my uh, Azumar got fully paralyzed, and when my Aegislash fell asleep, I thought I was in a lot of trouble, but through some you know nifty playing and relying on my opponent to not make... Um, hopefully not making the best predictions, I was able to come back and make it a 3-0 win. So of course, leave a like if you enjoyed the battle, 500 likes is always a go for daily uploads, and I'll see you next time. Have a nice night guys, peace.